Good morning, everyone. It's good to have you with us this morning as we um, start this 11 o'clock on our second live service. Only we're not doing it live today. Um, this has been taped previously. Uh, Sunday mornings and Facebook Live, we found out last week, gives us a several minute delay in voices and mouths, which is interesting to watch at times, but it's not really what we wanted to do. And so we've taped this, but I just wanted to come on this morning and just welcome you to this uh, service. We've we've got uh, Tracy Wershmitt has got a, an original piece that she had shared earlier in the week. We have it for you, and, and Pastor Brandy and I are going to be um, sharing a message as well. Um, but just a couple of things. Uh, don't forget our 11 o'clock every day where somebody is online, one of our pastors has been reaching out and offering some words of comfort. We've been updating uh, as we go along. Those are uh, in the process of being updated to our webpage at www.purpledoorchurch.com. Um, and also on our app, uh, on the videos at the very bottom in media and videos, we're updating each of those 11 o'clock messages each and every day. So you can uh, go back and check those. Um, the other thing is at 9.30 every morning, Pastor Brandy has been doing something for family and children, um, activities for parents to be helping with the kids, uh, as well as uh, devotionals and discipleship activities for our spiritual lives as well. So you can tune in at 9.30. Um, Pastor Lizzie has uh, been working. She's helping with uh, doing some Spanish lessons on there. And I'm trying to do a weekly magic show for the kids as well. So that's at 9.30 every day, uh, along with our 11 o'clock every day with us. Um, one note, just to bring to your attention, um, Audrey Harler, one of our older members, has passed. Her services are going to be a family, just private family services this week and Wednesday. But uh, just to bring that to your attention as we come together as a service today. Thanks for joining us and uh, stay tuned. And we're going to be bringing you once again live, almost, from the Purple Door Church. We're glad you're here. Thanks. Good morning. Ruby, you want to say good morning? Hi. <laughs> um, I miss you guys. Uh, I know Pastor Brandy is getting ready to go here live um, at 11, so be sure to tune in for that. We have been so um, encouraged by your comments, encouraged by the interaction during this time that we cannot meet. Um, we miss you guys so much, and um, I really miss worshiping with you. I feel like um, God has laid it on my heart to record some encouragement for you. We can't record like songs that we normally do in worship. Um, we're not allowed, like, you know, tech-wise. Um, but I can record some songs that I've written. So um, this morning I wanted to to share with you a song that I wrote actually while I was beside my dad, my dad in the hospital bed, as his hospital bed, um, the first time. So the first time he went in with this autoimmune condition. And um, I remember being by his bedside and this coming to me, Ruby's tinkering around over there. Mm -hmm. um, I remember this coming to me that God is good all the time. Um, I knew that whatever was happening right then, that my faith was stable. I could stand on my faith and that God knew what the future held. Um, and I know that if my dad was here today, he would physically not be able to survive what is going on in our country and God knew. He had the foresight to know. He sees the bigger picture. We can trust him. So um, I hope you like it.
today guys check in with us at 11 o'clock for pastor brandy's live and uh, we love you we want to support you and we're here to encourage you have a good day good morning purple door we are excited to be here with you again today it's been a journey and we have been walking through this just as you have and we have been praying for you we have been just keeping you in our prayers. We've been reaching out to people. We've been um, just loving on people the way we can. And we pray that that's what you guys are doing too, because we are the church. We are the church and we should be doing those things every day. We want to share a few announcements with you. Just a reminder, we are going live every day at 11 on the church page. And so the different pastors and staff will be on there to give you words of encouragement, to update you on what's going on, and just check in because we have learned that this technology is our new personal. And so that's how we're reaching you. So log in at 11, check those out. At 9.30, we're going live on our family ministry page. And we're trying to make that fun for the kids with Pastor Dennis doing magic. We're going to be doing some Q&As. We're going to be learning Spanish from Lizzie. So we're going to be doing a lot of things on our family page. If you're not a member of that group, let me know and we can add you. We also um, have plenty of resources available to you to continue to grow in your relationship with God. So we can add you to Right Now Media. We can tell you about some other resources you can use. We have ways that you guys can still be meeting just in a digital format. So let us know how we can support you in that way so that you can continue to grow. We are excited to be able to be back together, but we know that God is still going to be transforming us in the middle of our time um, right now. We want to encourage you um, with that idea that we can still be being transformed through this time. We have been doing this sermon series about where the cross intersects with the world. And this week, our theme was being transformed. And so we want to remind you that transformation isn't just one moment. Transformation is really a journey that we go on when we accept God into our hearts we are on a journey to grow closer to him. We've talked a lot about grace and that grace was there for us before we accept Jesus into our heart. Grace is there with us when we have that transformation moment, but grace is with us 
through our entire journey. And that's when God begins to work in us. That's when God begins to make us new and transform us. But we have to participate in that. We have to make sure that we are growing, that we are doing studies, that we are in the word, that we are praying so that we can be transformed in the way that God wants us to be, because he wants us to be involved in that. We have to participate to be transformed. And when we do that, when we're transformed, we're going to become more like Christ. God is going to continue to reveal to us who we are in him. And he's going to continue to reveal to us what his plan for us is and how he wants us to grow and where he wants us to go, how he wants us to serve, how he wants us to love. He's going to give us all of that information. And so then we become more like him. We're never going to be Christ, but we can try every day to do what he is asking of us. We can try every day to grow closer to him and learn more about him and also to serve and love other people. In this time, we have been sharing over and over again that we need to be in community. We need to be growing closer to each other, even when we cannot be in person. But we also need to be doing things that we would be doing if we were in the building. We need to be the church. We need to continue to show Christ to everyone that we meet. And so people can see Christ in us, and they can see Christ in us because we're continuing to be transformed. We want you to remember that you can show God's love right now, maybe even more now than ever. We have a pedestal of, of opportunities to be able to tell other people how we are feeling calm in this, how we may be feeling peace. Even if it's overwhelming, we know that God is in the midst of all of this and that God has a plan. So use this opportunity to show love, to show grace, to support people, to reach out to people and show through your transformation how God has moved in your life. And maybe just maybe that testimony will speak to someone and they will want to know more about this Jesus that you talk about all the time. Good morning, Purple Door. This is certainly not the kind of Lenten Easter program we were planning on, is it? Here we are in week two of video church. It's the new reality for who we are. It's the new reality of what we're going to be. Um, it's different. It's not the walk to through Lent to Easter that any of us imagined we would ever be doing. Never in a million years would I have thought that I would be giving up toilet paper for Lent. That wasn't ever in my thinking. Sitting around reminiscing about the good old days when grocery stores still had food. Yeah, this is a different place that we live. Um, it's hard to explain it. It's hard to worship in a format like this when we don't really get a chance to see each other other than through video or live streaming. We don't get a chance to sit together and share and community and fellowship together as a church. It's tough to keep going. Here we are in week, what, one, week two, and already um, we are looking for ways to keep from going stir crazy. Uh, I'm, I went back to the passage of scripture in Luke 24 that talked about the two men that witnessed the crucifixion of Christ and were on their way home to Emmaus. It's a story that you know. The two on the road to Emmaus. And among the way, they they talked amongst themselves and said, ah, it's just their whole life had been taken away from them. <laughs> they had thought that Jesus was going to be the answer. They had thought that Jesus was going to be the, um, the way to the promised land. They thought Jesus was going to take care of the Romans and that, that God's Messiah was going to take over the world and that everything was going to be fine. And then they watched him down a cross and their hopes were crushed. Now, as they walk that pathway from Jerusalem to Emmaus, a man came up to them, joined them in conversation, asked him what was going on, and they were, they were incredulous that he didn't know what they said. Where have you been? How could you have been in Jerusalem and not seen this happening? And they began to tell him of their crushed hopes and their fears and the problems that they were facing in their life. And and they said in their one verse that I think is sums up their whole feeling, but we had hoped that he was going to be the one. How many times have we hoped that things were going to work out for us? 
this is not in any of our plans, the way we're living right now. It's not in any of our hopes. But when Jesus talked with them and then went into their homes and broke bread with them, they recognized him and they saw who he really was. And then as they ran back to Jerusalem to tell the people that they had talked to Jesus, that the one that they thought their hopes had been lost had come back, they said to each other, were not our hearts burning when he talked with us? You see, that's what happens when we allow Christ into our lives. When we meet the risen Savior, our hearts, our lives burn. It transforms us. It changes us. We know that. We see it. We felt it in our lives. The transformation of knowing that we are loved, that we're forgiven, that everything's going to be okay. Now, we know that our hope is not found in the world. It's not found in what we see on the internet or television. It's not found in the things that are going on in the world today. Our hope, our transformation, our burning hearts is only found in Jesus. That's where all of our hope is. And if we lose that hope, what else do we have? I certainly don't want to put my trust into the news that's out there as my hope for the for the future. Yeah, I see glimmers of hope in that. But my true hope lies in knowing that God is in the midst of my life. And that my life has been transformed. It's been changed. It's been it's been altered in a way that will never be the same again. When we allow Christ into our lives. When we allow that transformation to take place, we are a changed people. There's a, a hymn, you probably heard it. It's called, He Lives. I serve a risen savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice of cheer. And just the time I need him, He's always near. He lives. He lives. Christ Jesus lives today. He walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me I am his own. He lives. He lives. Salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives? He lives? You can fill in the rest. He lives within my heart. You see, that's the transformation that we get every time we find the risen Savior and we appreciate the fact that we are loved, we are accepted, we're forgiven. And that even in the midst of all the scary things and all of our fears and all of our, our crushed hopes, I know that Christ lives within me. Are you experiencing the Lord of life in your heart? He's alive and hope is within us. Now, to be transformed doesn't mean that just our lives are changed, but how does that affect those around us? How can we be transformers to those around us? We can say, well, we can't do that now because we're stuck inside. Yeah, you're right. But our phones still work. We still have a mail. We have email. We have instant message. We've got lots of different kinds of things. It may not be a handshake or a hug. But, you know, we still have a way of reaching out. If we're going to truly be the transformation of Jesus Christ, we need to be able to do that with those around us. Those that need to know that life is not just what it is out there. We have lots of fears and lots of worries. We're stuck in our homes. We're worried about families. We're worried about health. We're worried about jobs and finances. We're worried what the future is going to look like. Well, we're not alone. There are some people sitting alone right now, every day. And they're running through all of those fears and all of those worries. So how can we be the transformation of the world, even though we're stuck in our homes? I don't think God's message stopped just because we're not meeting in church. 
I've seen a lot of memes on Facebook that the church is not the building, the church is the people. And that's where the transformation takes place. If we're truly transformed, we need to be transforming those around us. Reach out, touch. When, when you think of some of these people, I wonder how they're doing, reach out to them. Call them, send them a note. I actually went out and bought some stamps. Figured I'm probably going to be mailing from home. I've gotten spoiled with our postage meter here at the office. You know, drop them a note. Just say you're, you're thinking about them. Give them a phone call. But most of all, let people know that there is a hope that resounds in this world. It's bigger than any of our fears and any of the, any of the things that is going on. I certainly don't know about tomorrow, but I know who holds today. Our hope, our transformation happens not from outside. It happens because of what God does for us. May your heart be burning with the knowledge that Jesus Christ is there. May you focus each day on understanding more fully how God can use you in his way, in his life, in his world, that we can be transforming agents in this world. God's church isn't closed. It's just now in a bunch of homes. Hmm. That's pretty much the way it worked back in the book of Acts with a bunch of homes that told the story of a Jesus whose hearts were burning as they told that story. Purple door, go in peace. Knowing that while life may be disrupted, the hope of the world is continuing to transform the world one person at a time. Peace. Our hope, our transformation, <laughs> scratch. <laughs> Good morning, Purple Door Church. It's good to be with you today. Uh, I'm taking these off. Yeah, we're going to just, it's fine. You can just cut, I have like the computer screen in my. So we want to encourage you with that, with, with you that, with, you can edit that out. Uh, <laughs> that would, might have been a blooper right there. <laughs> no, you're live now. Oh. <laughs>